Prop Nation betting show is filmed on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. We pay our respects to all First Nations people as well as elders past, present and emerging. What's up, Prop Nation? It's your boy John here today. We're back for another edition of Footy. Footy is back. We're looking at round three today. We had a very, very good week last week in round two. We hit uh, another five-leg parlay, which I was stoked about, uh, which was really, really good. We also, we were very close with the Hawks and the Ds. We came close. We just missed by one. And then the Dogs as well with the Suns. Tim English couldn't get that goal, but we were so close. Uh, but it was really, really enjoyable. It's probably one of my best weekends betting to date. So I was really, really happy about that. We're off to a really good start with the footy. I think our record so far is about 14 and 4. We're hitting at about 77%. So happy to see how that's going. We also started the bus ride. We were over by leg two. Unfortunately, Wayne Malira couldn't come up with the goods for us. We should have bet um, Max Holmes. But we didn't. But uh, that's all right. We live to fight another day this weekend coming. It should be a really, really interesting week of footy for Easter long weekend. Uh, please like and subscribe. If you're watching to us on YouTube, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. And also, if you could leave a review on Apple or Spotify, that would also be amazing as well. Because uh, we are starting to gain, gain a lot of momentum. So really, really happy with how that's going. Uh, just a, a show note, Sully and I will be back. We're doing an NFL draft episode. We're going to tell you where we think each player is going at each pick number. So not necessarily teams. We'll have teams trading, of course, on the night. But we're going to do an NFL draft episode. That's going to be really good. So stay tuned for that. That's coming soon. Couple of uh, disclaimers before we get into the footy. As always, here in Australia, uh, never bet more than you can afford to lose. Um, especially when it comes to the bus ride. Feel free. We are le- we are effectively lighting ten dollars on fire. So make sure you're okay with that. Always gamble responsibly and uh, help us out there if you need as well. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website. Let's get into the footy. We'll do the bus ride as well this weekend coming. We're going to turn 10 Easter eggs into 10,000 Easter eggs. It's really, really exciting. We'll see how we go. Let's start with, holy crap, the 0 and 2 Lions are taking on the 0 and 3 Pies in a grand final rematch. Who would have thought that this would be uh, the the case coming into round three? But... uh, Here we are. This is going to be absolute chaos, and I'm here for it. It's going to be raining all week in Brisbane, except for Thursday night. Reckons it'll be sunny in about 22 degrees, but, uh, of course, check closer to date. Uh, Lions are favorited 16 and a half points, and the over-under is 164 and a half. So this is actually interesting because this is two of the lowest scoring teams. The only teams that are scoring worse than both of these teams. And so the Lions are doing particularly bad, but the Adelaide Crows, they had a really tough matchup against Geelong. And then in week one, they had that torrential rain game at the Gold Coast. And then the only worse team than that is, of course, the West Coast Eagles. So, and they have been historically bad for a number of years. So the fact that the Lions are playing really bad. The Pies are playing really bad. And they're both down there at the bottom. Uh, I'd almost be inclined. I don't bet really like team totals, but the under seems pretty good here at 164. With that said, I think I'm on the Pies here. I think that both teams have sort of got their backs to the wall. But the problem for the Lions is they're probably playing the worst they've played in a number of years. And Collingwood is still the best team in the league last year. And I expect them to sort of come up a bit more at some point and get it together. So there's not too much on the Lions side that I like right now because they're playing so poorly. But I am looking at a few Collingwood things. So for the Lions, Connor McKenna, I think, will be out. He's injured. And we could see Tom Dode come in. Um, As far as goals go, this is where it's interesting. I don't actually have anyone that I want to make a bet on kicking a goal here because they're not great value. So basically the way this works, I'll explain this now, is 
when you're a team like the Brisbane Lions, you've been good for so long. You've been a really high scoring team and now you're playing really poorly. So because you've been good, all you don't really get any good value from the sports books anywhere because you are likely to score goals. You're likely to hit the over. You're likely to hit your props. So that the fact that they're playing so poorly at the moment basically means that there's no good value. And if anything, they're going under. So I can give you some unders, but for any time goal scorer, I'm not looking at anyone because the ones who I think are going to score goals are bad value. And uh, it's not really worth it. It's not a great way to start the show. I'm sorry, but uh, we'll have some more later on. But it's just for this one. Um, as far as disposals go, if anything, like I was saying, I'm betting unders. If you can get Jared Berry unders he has been bad for a little bit he has had 18 and a half uh week zero and week one and he had 17 disposals and 10 so a jared berry under if it's still at 17 and a half or less or sorry or more i'd be inclined to bet that and you could also potentially look dane zorko's way he did hit his 19 and a half last round round one last time they played because they were on by last week he had 21, but uh, it's sort of hovered around there. So if that increases, I wouldn't mind betting the under for Dane Zorko. But I'm going to stay away for now. As I said, where I am looking is the pies. So um, we'll check closer to date for who's in and out. Um, but basically, all their players have gained value as far as kicking goals go and uh cashing money from that from the sports books. So Jordan Dugowie, for example, has gone from $1.65 last week to score at any time goal scorer up to $2.25. That's a huge increase. And he's had two shots a goal. He has kicked a goal as well. So there is a world in which I'd probably just bet that as it is. Like Jordan Dugowie, he does kick goals. We know this. He's only had one shot at goal. Oh, sorry. Two shots a goal in the season, 11 score involvements and one goal. So at $2.25, I think that's pretty good value. Um, Jack Crisp as well. He's my most likely to score a goal in this game. He has zero goals, two shots a goal, and nine score involvements, but his odds are about $3. So if for some reason they just don't think that he is uh, a shot to do anything, Mason Cox is a dollar ninety. but I'm staying away from Ruckman this week. They bloody let me down last week, so I'm not going back to them. Um, but this could be the Dacos game. I fully expect Josh Dacos and Nick Dacos to both have really good games here. I've actually got Nick Dacos for anytime goal scorer at $1.80 and Josh Dacos for 20 plus touches. Those are the two I like. We're doing the train. Uh, we're getting on the bus. I was going to say the train ride. We're getting on the bus ride, Sully's bus ride this weekend. And I'm looking that way. I might even cheat a little bit and do a sneaky little $3 anytime goal scorer for Jack Crisp. Maybe even one for Jordan to go. Just a one single. Um, so we're going to have a few things and then we'll kick off the bus ride this weekend. But uh, should be good. Um, some other ideas. Bray Braden Maynard, uh, 20 plus touches. Could look good as well. He has been sort of in that realm. He had 16 in week zero, but then 22 and 24. And his line has been sitting around 18 and a half. So even if you can get the over for that, over 18 and a half, love to see that. Um, and we could go back to the well with Patrick Lipinski. He's had a really, really good start to the season. He's basically, uh, he had a down week, week one, but he still had 18 disposals, week zero, 26, and last week, 22. So 20 plus touches, Really like that number for him as well. Josh Dacos, I bet he's under the other week because uh, I didn't think he could repeat, but he has been. So there we are. Uh, he's been playing well. So those are the tips for that one. Let's jump now into the Ruse versus the Blues. All right, this game will be at Marvel Stadium, so fully expect the roof to be closed. It was a beautiful day last weekend, and for some reason they closed the roof at Marvel. Okay, fine, whatever. Uh, Blues are 36 and a half point favorites. The over-under is 172 and a half there as well. So very healthy. Um, let's start with North Melbourne. Uh, Zach Fisher, I think, could probably be the best value here. He has had zero goals, but he did have a shot at goal last week and five score involvements as well. So he could be a decent price, I want to say. Yeah, he's there at $1.90 to score a goal. Uh, you could also look his way for 20-plus touches as well. He's had 21 in the first game and 25 last round, but his over-under is 23 and a half. So it could be fairly reduced there as far as disposals go. Uh, an unlikely candidate though, Harry Sheasel uh, might also be a shot. He's had a shot at goal. He does play in the backfield mostly and the midfield, uh, but seven score involvements. He's $4. So if you want a super long shot, 
Harry Shees will look his way. Paul Curtis as well. You might still get some value on Paul Curtis. He's a dollar sixty-five to kick goal this weekend. He had four goals last weekend, eight score involvements, and sorry, fifteen score involvements and eight shots at goal on the season. So Paul Curtis is definitely someone that I'm looking at uh, for any time goal score on the north side of things. As far as disposals go, Harry Sheasel came through last week with the 25 plus touches. He's off to a really good start, and I want to talk about probably the most under the radar player so far in footy. And his name is Tom Powell. Plays with the Roos. He's had 26 touches and 28 touches. And uh, round one, his line was 17 and a half disposals. And round two, it was 19 and a half. And he's been smashing it. He's also got two goals. He's $3 to kick a goal as well. So, I mean, he's just flying completely under the radar. So we, I think I really like Tom Powell for 20 plus touches this week against the Blues. And uh, if you're feeling frisky, Luke Davies Juniak is 25 plus touches. You could look as well. He's at 29 and 30, and his over under lines have been 27 and a half. So could be interesting to look at there. Uh, as far as um, the Blues go, anytime goal scorers. So we could go. My model says that it likes Blake Akers to kick a goal. But I don't, because he, he kind of plays the wing to a defensive sort of role, and he plays on the outside rebound 50. So two shots at goal, low, nine score involvements, um, but it mostly came in the first game against the Lions. They were on bye last week. Um, the one that I am looking at on the blue side to kick a goal is Arazio Fantasia. He is a dollar sixty to kick a goal, I believe, and uh, he has had zero goals this year. Two shots at goal, five score involvements, so... That's a nice number there that we could put together with something. As far as disposals go, we're looking at Mitch McGovern. He's had a cracking start to the season, especially week uh, one against the Tigers, sorry, round one. So 20 plus touches could be good there. And then Patrick Cripps as well has had a line of 24 and a half. And you could bet the over if you want. So there might not be much value in 20 plus touches, but we could also look Cripps's way there. I think when it comes to the bus ride, check closer to... Kick off, but Orazio Fantasia and Tom Powell were probably the two that I'm looking at this game. So I'm excited to see what happens there. Let's jump now to uh, Perth, where Frio is taking on the Crows. Uh, Frio are uh, 12 and a half point favorites over the Crows. The 2 and 0 Frio Dockers, the 0 and 2 Adelaide Crows. Wow, feels kind of a bit weird saying that. Uh, Perth is going to be beautiful weather all week as it is in Perth. It should be about 29 degrees. During the day and around kickoff, I think it's only going to be like 20, it's going to be like 25, 26. So should be a warm one out there uh, for Frio. Outs that we're looking at: Oscar McDonald knee will probably be out for a while. Brennan Cox as well; he'll need surgery. And Sean Darcy is still out with a knee. We could see Carl Warner come back as well, though. So there is a lot of goodness to be had with the Frio Duckers here. Anytime goal scorer. My model this week, the number one player it likes. So last week was Max Gorn, didn't come through, Dan Ruckman, but everyone else did. Caleb Sarong. He is obviously just breaking the league wide open at the moment. He is 436% chance to kick a goal in my model. He's the highest projected player. He has zero goals. He has three shots at goal and 17 score involvements. And he's about four dollars, I want to say, or something like that, where I Caleb be at four dollars to kick a goal. So that's a super long shot bet that it really likes. Um, but no, let's let's get into the more serious ones. Actually, the James Aish is the other one at 71% that it likes. He's had a shot at goal, so that's probably why he likes it. But he plays defense. He did come through for us last week as far as 20-plus touches go. It was beautiful. Uh, Luke Jackson from the Ruck. So, again, I'm staying off Ruckman this week. However, I will say Luke Jackson has four goals this year, and he kicked a lot of goals Last year. So he's one of those rare Ruckman who do actually kick goals like the model says. And I don't know anything about this guy. Matthew Johnson. Never heard of him. Um, but keep an eye out for him because the model also quite likes Matthew Johnson to kick a goal. And you can get it at $2.50. So that's not a bad number there. We'll jump now over to the uh, disposals market as well. Caleb Sarong, have you heard of him? I've already talked about him. Uh, he's, like I was saying, breaking the lead wide open. 30 and a half touches is his over under line. And it's probably nowhere near enough because he's just been smashing it out of the park. So there's probably, he's a great example of someone I just don't bet. Like his line is going to be so high 
Of course, he could get there, but then the sweat would be too real for me and he has every, you know, bit chance to get injured or just not make the the line for whatever reason. So I stay away from that. The player that I'm looking at is Luke Ryan. He has had a line of 22 and a half disposals both weeks, 33 and 23. He just got there last week, but uh, I'd be willing to go back to that because he has been very involved. Another one, Jordan Clark has been playing really, really well out of defense. He's had uh, 24 touches and 28 touches respectively. And then the other one, James Aish. We could go back to the well with James Aish. I don't mind that. 26 touches, 21 last week. Man, he it came through in the final minutes of the game, um, but he did get there in the end. So we appreciate you, James Aish. He's probably our easiest, uh, our best value because his lines have been 19 and a half week one and 20 and a half week two. So he's flying under the radar a little bit. We'll look at the Crows side of the ball now as well. And uh, Luke Pedler is $1.45 to kick a goal. He's had zero goals this year and he's had three shots at goal and seven score involvements. So he looks like he's right in that perfect range that we want. Um, could be a little bit of juice on Darcy Fogarty as well, who had a terrible miss. He's $1.22 to kick a goal. He already has two this year. Um, and the model likes him as well. And then Josh Rochelle is a very common goal scorer for the Crows, but you can get him at $1.50. He has four goals this year and six shots at goals. So why would you bet Darcy Fogarty, when, who's had two goals and he's $1.22, when I mean, you get Josh Rochelle for $1.50 and uh, four goals? Uh, sorry, not to kick four goals. He's had four goals this year. Uh, and then if you want a really, really super long shot, Rory Laid is still apparently a good chance to kick a goal, and he's out at $4, so that could be a little bit risky as well. But there's a couple there. Disposals. Uh, Wayne Malira, you absolutely killed us last week, uh, but we forgive you. We will come <laughs> – probably won't bet you again, but uh, we'll come back to it at some point uh, in the season, I imagine. Matt Crouch, similar to Caleb Sarong, he's absolutely destor- destroying the league uh, so far this year. 33 touches and 37 touches, and I fully expect that to repeat. And his line has been about 28 and a half, so that's been nice to see. Mitch Hinge is sort of flying under the radar a little bit as well. He has had 19 touches and 22 touches as well. So... uh for 20 plus touches, his line is 21 and a half as well. You could look his way. So he he might be a little bit of a sneaky one. The two that I'm really looking at though, uh, Luke Pedler and Luke Ryan for the touches is where I like to go. All right, next game is Bombers at Saints versus Saints at Marvel Stadium. This is kind of both of their home grounds, so there's no real uh, home team advantage here. But the Saints are nine and a half point favorites against the very high scoring Bombers who have the very bad defense. So this should be an interesting game. The over under is 164 and a half and the Saints have been scoring. So I like the over there and we know the Bombers can score as well. We know that Peter Wright is going to be suspended for a number of weeks, so he won't be playing we're hoping for the Bombers to see Darcy Parrish back because if he's back, check close to the date for betting, but he really greatly affects all of those around him because he's such a high disposal getter. Uh, for any time goal scorers for the Bombers, there's lots of just one single shots of goals. So there's not too much uh, disparity that we can really take advantage of at this point. The model likes uh, Will Setterfield at this point is a 90... Uh, nine score to kick a goal. He's had, but he's only had uh, one shot at goal for the season, but 12 score involvement. So he's mainly doing it out of the midfield as we like to see. You know who I really, really like is Jade Gresham. He's had a fantastic start to the season for the Bombers. He was a really good uh, pickup. I think he's one of my favorite off season transactions and he's a dollar 35 to kick a goal. He has four goals already has seven shots at goal and 15 score involvements, and he plays forward. So it's kind of like the perfect storm for him there. His uh, first game for the Bombers, he only had 12 disposals, but last week, 23 disposals against the Swans. He absolutely popped off. So really, really love to see that from Jade Gresham. As far as disposals go, well, Archie Perkins. I want to see how Darcy Parrish, if he plays, affects Archie Perkins because he's had 24 touches and 21 touches both rounds, and no one has really expected him to do anything really. So uh, Archie Perkins for 20 plus touches could be a way we're looking. 
Andrew McGrath, though, I think he's still probably the safest bet. His line has been 22 and a half both weeks, and he scored 33 and 25 uh, sorry, scored. He got 33 and 25 disposals, respectively, there. So uh, he's having a really good start to the season. Heppel's been good for 20-plus touches. Setterfield mentioned him already. Will Setterfield's been uh, really uh, reliable for for over for hitting his over. His over, his over under has been 21 and a half disposals. He's had 24 and 29. So looking good. Nick Martin as well. Overs. He's been playing really well. 23 and a half has been his line. He's had 25 and 31. So there's value everywhere to be had for the Bombers. So uh, we're going to definitely be looking their way when it comes to putting a, maybe a, like another five leg together. This I think this is going to be a really juicy game for five legs. That 164 line, I think that's too low. I think it's going to blow way past that. I think the Saints look good. Bombers defense is bad. Bombers offense is good at scoring. So this is these are the games that we love, love, love to attack. And it's going to be the Arvo game. We'll move to the Saints side of things and probably one of my locks of the week, it might be Mitch Owens. Now, he's only $1.25, so not a huge amount of value there, but he has zero goals on the season. He has three shots at goal and 12 score involvement. So, Model says that he is the most likely or one of the most likely uh, this uh, this week to kick a goal. Riley Bonner, is he worth a fly? He's had one shot at goal and five score involvements, but his price at the moment... If you want to get some sort of long shot there, he's like $4 to kick a goal. So maybe uh, Jack Higgins, he kicked four goals last week. He was our no sweat bet and he kicked them in like the opening two minutes of the game. So that was fantastic for our bus ride. He has completely lost value though. He went from like $1.45 or something like that to kick a goal. He's now down to $1.15. So uh, we can't, we're, we're going to have to say goodbye to Jack Higgins for a couple of weeks until that shoots back up again. Rowan Marshall as well. Rowan Marshall has been really, really good from the rucks. So would, wouldn't mind looking his way as well. And then let's turn to the Saints disposals. Cause I have, I talked about Tom Powell on North Melbourne, who's been flying under the radar. Here is another, here's the second player who's flying completely under the radar. Although he's starting to get a bit, he's starting to get noticed now, but uh, Nasai Wanganin Malira is playing lights out at the moment. He's had a line of 23 and a half both weeks and he's had no problem getting them 25 and 32 touches. He's had a shot at goal as well. So he's getting heavily, heavily involved. If we can still get him for 20 plus touches, that would be delightful. His line is 23 and a half though. But you know, you could even still bet the over for that one. I don't mind. Jack Steele overs have been really, really good. 25 and 26 touches. And his line was 24 and a half. And uh, Marcus Windhager as well. He's like this low key flex. I don't know too much about him, but his lines have been fairly conservative and he had 24 touches last week as well. So there might be something there. And then um, just wanted to shout out, shout out Lucky. We, I was all over Riley Bonner last week, but then I didn't actually place any bets on him. I sort of wanted to just see him for one more week. And that was a smart thing to do because in the end he had 17 touches, so he did not hit. So that was a good stay away. We're lucky we stayed away from that. We jump now to the Sunday day game between Port Adelaide and the D's. This should be a fantastic game. It's in Adelaide. It's going to be about 28 degrees. It's going to be really, really warm. Port are 14 and a half point favorites and the over under is 165.5. And I have to wonder if that's because Stephen May is going to be out and Jake Lever is going to be out for the D. So I think that that's going to impact their defense a lot. And we know Port Adelaide can take a shot at goal. And look, whether or not they get it is another story, but they can take cracks at goal. So we like that. Not too much to take advantage for Port Adelaide at this stage. Travis Boak is like this really weirdly good value at $2.25. He's had two shots at goal and 14 score involvements. Ollie Wines is a long shot, $3.50 to kick a goal, but he's had two shots at goal and 16 scoring involvements as well. And he's had 23 touches and 26 touches respectively. So uh, that should be interesting. And then Miles Bergman on the wing, sort of in the back area, uh, as far as disposals go for Port Adelaide, Ryan Burton is off to a really good start as well in Port's defense. So watch out for him. And Kane Farrell as well had a pretty big week last week. So Port Adelaide are tricky because they are going to have really high lines because they got really, really good players at the top. Not too much hidden value at the moment, but like I was saying, Ryan Burton, 25 and a half touches has been his line. He's had 22 and 23 both weeks. So quite like that against the D's who we'll talk about now, like I was saying, Lever and May 
are expected to be out. Um, as far as kicking a goal goes, so Christian Petrarca is my number one that I really like. He is a uh, dollar fifty-five, I want to say, or dollar four. Th- uh, where are we? He's had three goals, eight shots at goal, and thirty-two score involvements. You heard that right? He has been all over the place. He's also registered. 26 touches, 29 touches, and 29 touches. And his line has been 26 and a half for disposals. So he's playing insane football at the moment. We know this about him, though, but he's still at $1.55. He's still really, really good value. The other one, I have not found a line for him yet, but Harrison Petty came back last week. Um, He's not like my favorite player in the world, but if you can find him... If you can find a market for him, he had zero goals last week and two shots at goals. So there might be something there, but no, nah, actually, you know what? Forget him. Christian Petrarca, go with him. Uh, it also really likes Clayton Oliver to kick a goal, but he's $3.50. So a bit further out. As far as disposals go for the D's. Now, here's a name you probably weren't expecting me to say, but Judd McVie, he has been flying under the radar the most for the D's. Uh, he's had 20 touches, 20 touches, 20 touches. If these trends continue, I'm expecting another 20 touches. So we could look at him. There is a, a, obviously a big risk of that falling off. But with Lever and May out, that might make more room for him to get more touches. So Judd McPhee could be risky, but could be good as well. And then Jack Billings as well. The last two weeks, 23 touches and 22 and 20 touches. As long as he's not the medical sub again like he was in round zero, then he could be a chance as well. So check for game time for that one. And Ed Langdon as well has been playing pretty well. He had 26 touches last week against the Hawks. He dominated. And then week zero and week one, he had 19 and 18. So it's sort of been hovering around that area. His line has been 18 and a half. So don't mind betting the over for Ed Langdon there. So I said the uh, Saturday night game for Port Brisbane. That, that was the Saturday night game. It was not the Sunday day game. This is the Sunday day game. Dogs versus Eagles at Marvel Stadium. The Bulldogs are 46 and a half point favorites. And the over under, it has not come out yet that I can see. But uh, the the Eagles, the West Coast Eagles have been definitely giving it up. So uh, we'll see how that goes. For the dogs, uh, Ed Riches might still be in concussion protocol, so check that out. And Nick Caulfield had a right shoulder injury as well on the weekend, so watch out for that. Not sure who's going to come in for them. And then for the Eagles, Oscar Allen is still out. I think that that's about it for now. Anytime goal scorers for the dogs. So Tim English, he didn't come through for us last week. I, he was one of my favorite bets of the week. He didn't come through. So we could go back to the well, but like I was saying at the top of the show, I'm not going there this week with Ruckman. I need to see. Like, if he kicks a goal, then we miss out. That's fine. Model really likes Adam Trelaw to kick a goal. He's had three shots at goal and seven score involvements with zero goals so far, and he's $2.25 to kick a goal. And he's had heaps of the ball, 31 touches and 27 touches as well. So quite like him. If you'd rather bet someone in the forward line, though, to kick a goal, Latham Vandermeer has zero goals, and he's had two shots at goal as well. And he's $2.25 to kick a goal. So that's really great value for a forward. You don't really see that too often. Also, uh, Riley Sanders. Shot at goal could be good if you can get a Riley Sanders market. He is, I guess, about $3, but he's had two shots at goal. And he's had plenty of the ball as well. 22 touches last week was really good to see as well. So it might not be a line there, but he's a new guy. He's playing really well. So watch out for Riley Sanders. For disposals, Jason Johannesson is still lighting the league on fire. He's actually been one of the best players in the league, or or I guess as far as (laughs) for our purposes for prop betting goes, he's been one of the most reliable. He's had a solid, his his line has been 20 and a half, and he's had 26 and 25 touches. So Jason Johannesson, he's definitely going to be in the bus ride ticket for sure for 20 plus touches. Player who's flying under the radar a little bit is Lachlan Bramble. He's one of their newer uh, recruits as well. 22 touches and 20 touches. If he has an over-under that's under 20, if it's like 15, 16, 17, around there, I like betting the over for Bramble. Um, And then Bont is old reliable, of course, for 25 plus touches. His line has been 27 and a half. He got 32 last week, so I fully expect that to go up. But for 25 touches, hopefully there's still value to be had there as well. Um, And then Bailey Dale, 
Adam Trelaw. Markets are exactly where they probably should be at this stage. Yeah, Adam Trelaw is getting 28 and a half as his line. Bailey Dale's 23 and a half, and they've both been around about there. So bit bit risky, but but could be worth a crack if you want. For the Worst Coast Eagles now, well, uh, uh, Petricelli last week was, Jack Petricelli was one of my favorite uh, to kick a goal last week because he had three in the first round and then Oscar Allen was out and I was like, okay, he plays forward. He should be a really, really good uh, shot. Uh, he didn't kick a goal at all, but he's $1.35 this week to kick a goal. So we could almost go back to the well with Jack Petricelli. I don't mind it there. But uh, the player that my model really likes the most is Jamie Cripps. He's a dollar forty. He already has two goals as well, and he has five shots at goal and fifteen score involvement. So, pick your poison between Jack Petricelli and Jamie Cripps. I think I would probably lean Jamie Cripps because he's a better value, but um, could go either way there. And then Ruben Jinby, just watch out for him because they've moved him from defense to the mids and he's had two shots at goal as well. So for a long shot, for $4 to kick a goal, I don't mind Ruben Jinby. I wonder if they've caught up to that fact yet or not. Um, For disposals, Jeremy McGovern gone over 18 and a half both weeks. So Jeremy McGovern, we like, he's had 19 and 26 touches last week and he plays in defense and uh, the ball spends a lot of time in the Eagles defensive line as well. So... Could be worth looking at. Elliot Yo has had 20 plus touches in both games as well. Jaden Hunt has had uh, 20 plus touches in both games as well. So look out for those two guys as well. Jaden Hunt has had a line of 18 and a half as well. And if you prefer to bet unders, I do have an under for you. Tim Kelly, he is playing very, very bad at the moment. And the expectation is that he should be one of their, the, one of their best players, if not their best. His line has been around 26 and a half both weeks, and he had 16 and 22. He's really not come close. Um, so he might be a bit of a shell of the human, uh, <laughs> a shell of a human at the moment. So if you like betting unders, Tim Kelly unders could be good there as well. Let's jump now to the Tigers and the Swans. They're playing Sunday night at the MCG. It's going to be sunny on Sunday. We expect it could actually cool off in the afternoon. It should. It, it will probably be around 16 degrees, I'd say, by the time the kickoff rolls around. Swans are 22 and a half point favorites. Don't have an over-under for the game yet as well. Uh, Tyler Young for the Tigers could be back from concussion protocol, playing in defense, so watch out for that. But the Tigers have got injuries all over the place. Anytime goal scorers, Tim Taranto is a dollar eighty to kick a goal. He has had two shots, uh, two goals, six shot, shots at goal, and eighteen score involvements. But he has had a bad start to the year. He's been really inconsistent as far as disposals go as well. If you want some good value, Dustin Martin, a dollar thirty, he could be in there. He's had two goals and five shots at goal. So you don't often get Dustin Martin for a dollar thirty in that range over the years. So I don't mind looking his way. Um, one player I will say I really like Seth Campbell plays in the forwards for Richmond. A dollar fifty-five, three goals, seven shots at goal. And I thought that Richmond were going to be really, really bad this year. They actually have not been as bad as I had thought. I think they'll lose to the Swans, but I think that they'll still be really competitive as well. Uh, Nick Vlosten for disposals did not come through for us last week. He probably would have featured on the bus ride had we made it that far all the way to Sunday. So 18 and a half might be worth a look if he could bounce back. Jacob Hopper, he was one of their pickups from, I think from the Giants, right? If he plays, he could be really good. He, uh, in week one and week two, he had 23 and 25 touches, and his line is about 22 and a half. He didn't play last week, but if he plays this week, Jaden, uh, sorry, Jacob Hopper, 20 plus touches looks good. Jaden Short is hovered around the 20 mark as well. The 20 mark, sorry, the 20 touches mark. Not that he's taking 20 marks, that'd be amazing. Um, but he's had 23, 19, and 21. So sort of hovered there. Jaden Short could be worth a look as well. For the Swans, Errol Goulden is still up there in the model. I can't say that I like him too much because last week he did actually kick the goals that we've been expecting him to kick, so that was good. He's a dollar fifty to kick a goal. He had two goals last week, four shots at goal, 26 score involvement. So you can see he's sort of playing on the ba- the 50 perimeter mark and he's sending them in all the time. 
He's sending the ball into his uh, forwards all the time. So he's a bit risky. The one that I really like this week that I'm probably going to go with is Chad Warner is $1.50 to kick a goal. He has six goals. He has eight shots at goal and 33 score involvements. Why is he $1.50? I have no idea. Lock that one in. I really enjoy that. And then the other player that I'm looking at, Corey Warner, he had his first game last week and he was pretty good. Three shots at goal and six score involvements for zero goals. So if you like a long shot bet there as well, if you can get a number, he's at $2.50 potentially around there. So looking that way uh, for disposals, Isaac Heaney, well, he's a star. He's been one of the best players in the league to start the year as well so far. Will you still get him at 21 and a half touches? His line has been 21 and a half and he smashed them. 26 touches, 29 touches and 32 touches last week against the Bombers. I don't expect that to be a 21 and a half anymore, but maybe, maybe we could get him for 25 plus touches. That'd be interesting. Chad Warner as well. You might be able to get for 25 plus touches and Errol Gould in the line has been 26 and a half and that's gone under two or three weeks. So watch out for Errol Goulden. He gets a lot of hype. A lot of people really like him, but two to three weeks, he hasn't actually hit his uh, over-under disposals line. So watch out for that. All right, let's bring this home, the final game of the round. It's between the Hawks and the Cats. It's the Easter Monday clash, and hopefully by then we'll have 10,000 Easter eggs. Wouldn't that be nice? Um, Could be cloudy and a bit cool in Melbourne for the day, but I think it's a nice day to play footy. Cats opened at 20 and a half point favorites, and it's down to now 18 and a half. So money's coming in on the Hawks. Uh, I don't love that. For the Cats, uh, Patrick Dangerfield, he will probably miss. He tweaked his hamstring late in the game last week against the Crows. I do expect Mitch Duncan to be back. He had a baby. Don't expect him to miss two weeks because of that. And then Tom Atkins, hopefully he'll be back as well. He he was like a game time miss. I think he injured himself in warmups or something last week against the Crows. So hopefully he'll come back for that game. For goal scorers, I think we might be able to go back to the well with Tyson Stengel. He came through with us with just the one goal last week. So he has been inconsistent. He is a bit of a risk and he's only a dollar 30 that you can get out of him. But against the Hawks, we saw the D's absolutely dominate them over the weekend. And I'll be at this game. I'm looking forward to seeing how he plays uh, four shots, a goal and 12 score involvements is nice on the forward line as well. Less so, but Grian Myers as well had three goals last week. He was, I was tossing up between him and Tyson Stengel. I went with Stengel in the end, but wow, three goals uh, for Grian Myers. For disposals, Grian Myers, again, he's had a line of 18 and a half each week, and he's sort of been hovering around 20 and 26 touches last week. So he's been actually playing some really, really good, really good football for the Cats, and I love to see it. Hugely involved, so having a great start to the season. So 20 plus touches, I do like that. If you can still get over 18 and a half, I like that as well. Tom Stewart. Is there any value in Tom Stewart? He was arguably the best player in the round last week. He had 10 intercept marks. He tied the all-time record. 22 touches, 28 touches as well. And his line has been hovering around 22 and a half. So really like to see that for Tom Stewart. And I think the safest bet personally for me for the Cats would be Max Holmes. 20 plus touches. He's been an absolute gun. He could actually bet over the 23 and a half with Patrick Dangerfield expected to miss if you are keen for a bit of a sweat. But 23, 24 touches, Max Home 20 plus touches. It should be a nice number if we can get that as well. Let's finish now with the Hawks. And well, <laughs> here's what we've learned from the Hawks over the weekend for any time goal scorer. First of all, they have to score a goal. <laughs> then we'll worry about who's going to score the goal. Uh, we were all over Nick Watson last week to kick his first goal in the league, and he did. That was awesome to see. And I think the other one, was it Connor McDonald? I think it was Connor McDonald kicked the first goal for the Hawks as well. I should know I was at this game. Um, but that also came through for us as well. My model really likes uh, Massimo Ambrosio to kick a goal. He's at $1.55, but he plays defense. So I just, I don't love $1.55 for a defender. It's just not really there, but he's had two shots at goal. 
Um, the best player, this is the best player on the Hawks at the moment. It's Jack Ginevan. He's only played two games for them. He is play, he's had 17 touches both weeks. He's $1.35 to kick a goal. He has two goals. So, I mean, they don't score too often, but when they do, I think it could be Gin who gets it done for them. As far as disposals go, so uh, Massimo, we're still looking at him for touches as well. He's actually been playing really well in the backfield. 29 in round one and 23 touches round two was really good to see. Josh Weddle, 15 plus touches if there is any value. 20 plus has hit both weeks. So we had we were on Josh Weddle last week and that came through. 20 and 21 touches week one and two. Don't expect him to have a huge line. You could also look at James Warple. He's had 28 touches and 27 touches. So his line has been 25 and a half. So if you like 25 plus for Warple, it could be there. And the last one we'll talk about, Connor Nash, 19 and 20, but his line has been 23 and a half. So he can't get there. So you might have sit, uh, find value in an under for Connor Nash. That's going to do it for round three of the AFL footy. Man, it's so good to have footy back. It's been awesome to bring you this content as well. I hope you're enjoying it. I hope we have as good a week as we did last week for round two. If you're still watching, please like and subscribe to this. Leave us a comment on YouTube. You can follow us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. I'll be back next week with round four, and we'll go over and see how we did. Uh, stay tuned for our bus ride as well. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok and Twitter to um, see what legs we end up closing with at game time for that as well. Watch out for our NFL draft show with Sully. That's coming soon as well. There's so much going on. Enjoy the footy this weekend. We'll catch you soon. Goodbye. Chances are you're about to lose. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.